Samantha Ray's heels clicked rhythmically on the wet cobblestones as she hurried through the narrow London alleyways. Her cloak pulled tight against the chilly drizzle. The muted glow of the gaslights glinted off puddles and cast eerie shadows that seemed to reach for her as she passed. She glanced over her shoulder, making sure she wasn't being followed before ducking into the imposing stone edifice that housed the British Library. Inside, the cavernous space was hushed, the silence broken only by the occasional rustle of pages or a muffled cough. The familiar smell of aged leather and paper enveloped Samantha like a comforting blanket as she made her way to the reference desk, her pulse quickening with anticipation. I'm here to see a Codex Galanus, she said in a low voice, sliding her credentials across the polished wood. The librarian, an elderly man with a hooked nose and shrewd eyes, studied her card for a long moment before nodding slowly. This way, Ms. Ray, dot dot. He led her through a labyrinth of shadowy stacks, their footsteps echoing off the marble floors. Samantha's mind raced as she followed him deeper into the bowels of the library. The Codex Gelanus, a legendary 12th-century manuscript said to contain the secret alchemical formulas of the medieval scholar Odo of Gelanus. Rumored to have vanished centuries ago, its sudden reappearance had sent shockwaves through the rare manuscripts community. And now, thanks to a wealthy private collector named Albert Kingsley, Samantha was about to be one of the first to lay eyes on it. The librarian ushered her into a small, dimly lit room, gesturing to a wooden table where the codex sat in a glass case, an armed guard standing watch. Samantha's breath caught as she approached, taking in the ancient leather binding, the faded gold leaf title glimmering under the lights. With trembling hands, she lifted the case and carefully opened the cover, the vellum pages crackling softly. As she began to examine the manuscript, a frown furrowed her brow. Something wasn't right. The calligraphy, while beautiful, had subtle inconsistencies, a flourish here and there that seemed out of place for the 12th century. And the colors of the illuminated letters were far too vivid, the pigments too modern. An icy realization trickled down her spine. This was no priceless artifact. It was an extremely skilled forgery. Samantha sank onto the edge of Ethan's cluttered desk, mind racing as the implications of her discovery crashed over her like a frigid wave. Kingsley, the smug American billionaire who had made such a show of generously loaning the Codex Galanus to the British Library, clearly had a vested interest in seeing it authenticated as the genuine article. But why? What could he possibly gain from foisting a forgery off as one of the Western world's most sought-after lost manuscripts? Samantha's eyes narrowed as she mentally flipped through her encyclopedic knowledge of the rare book trade's dark underbelly, the convoluted schemes, the shady dealers, the ruthless collectors who would stop at nothing to possess the unpossessable. Kingsley's name kept cropping up, hovering on the edges of the most unsavory rumors. An uneasy premonition prickled the back of her neck. Her mother had always warned her that her relentless pursuit of the truth would land her in trouble one day. As Samantha gazed unseeing at Ethan's concerned face, she couldn't shake the feeling that day had finally arrived. Schooling her features into a mask of calm professionalism, Samantha closed the codex. I'll need to study this further cross-reference it with other 12th century manuscripts, she told the librarian. May I come back tomorrow for a more thorough analysis? Of course, he nodded. I'll let Mr. Kingsley know. A chill ran through Samantha at the mention of Kingsley's name, but she forged on with a polite smile. That would be wonderful, thank you. She gathered her things with feigned nonchalance and hurried out into the night, glancing behind her as she went. Her instincts screamed that she was in danger, that she had stumbled into something far larger and more nefarious than a simple forgery. She needed answers, and there was only one person she could turn to, Ethan Hart. Ethan was a brilliant rare manuscript conservator by day, but Samantha knew his investigative skills bordered on the supernatural. If anyone could help her unravel this mystery, it was him. Heart pounding, Samantha hailed a cab and gave the driver Ethan's address in Shoreditch, anxiously smoothing her wool skirt as Victorian terraces flashed by outside the rain streaked windows. Ethan's ground floor workshop was dark as the cab pulled up outside. Samantha rapped on the door, shifting from foot to foot, chilled to the bone from more than the weather. After what felt like an eternity, the door creaked open and Ethan's face appeared in the gap, 
ghostly pale in the gaslight. His hazel eyes widened. Sam? What are you doing here? It's the middle of the night. I know. I'm sorry, she said, teeth chattering. But it's important. Can I come in? Ethan hesitated for only a second before opening the door wider, ushering her inside. His workshop was cluttered with books, paintings in various states of restoration, and antique bric-a-brac. He led her to a worn velvet sofa and sat down next to her, so close their knees almost touched. Samantha's heart fluttered at his proximity. They had been friends for years, but recently she found herself flustered in his presence, hyper-aware of his every look and casual touch. She tamped those feelings down now. There were far more pressing matters at hand. I examined the Codex Galanus at the library tonight, she began, wringing her chilled hands. Ethan, it's a fake. An incredibly convincing one. Ethan's brow furrowed. A forgery? Are you sure? Positive. The calligraphy is all wrong for the 12th century. And the pigments are too modern. She shook her head. Someone went to a lot of trouble to create this. And Albert Kingsley is determined to pass it off as the real thing. Ethan leaned back, stroking his stubble-shadowed jaw. Kingsley! That billionaire rare book collector who's always swanning about, buying up valuable manuscripts? The very one, Samantha nodded grimly. He loaned the codex to the British Library. Wants me to officially declare it authentic. But why would he do that? What does he gain by foisting a fake medieval manuscript on the world? That's what I need to find out, Samantha said. And why I need your help. This is more than some rich twit's elaborate hoax. I can feel it. Something darker is going on here. Samantha went on to detail the inconsistencies she had noticed in the manuscript. As she spoke, her gaze caught on an ornate wooden box sitting on a side table. A strange symbol was carved into the lid. Two snakes entwined around a sword. The same symbol she had seen stamped on the codex's cover. Ethan, she interrupted herself, heart suddenly racing. That box. Where did you get it? Oh, that. Picked it up at an estate sale last week. Why? Samantha crossed to the box and opened the creaking lid with shaking hands. Nestled inside on a bed of crumbling red velvet sat a stained, ancient-looking piece of parchment covered in mysterious symbols and old German text. But it was the illustration at the center that made her blood run cold. Ethan, she said hoarsely. Look. He peered over her shoulder and sucked in a sharp breath. There, in faded crimson ink, was an incredibly detailed drawing of the Codex Galanus, and in the margins, scrawled in spidery handwriting, was a list of names. Most were alien to Samantha, but one made her heart nearly stop. Albert Kingsley. She turned to Ethan, eyes wide. He's connected to this and has been for some time. Her gaze flicked back to the cryptic text on the parchment. We need to get this translated. I have a feeling it holds the key to what Kingsley is really after with the fake codex. Ethan nodded slowly. I know someone at the university, a German history professor. I'll take it to him first thing. He carefully removed the fragile parchment and rolled it into a preservation tube. When he turned back to Samantha, his eyes were shadowed with worry. Sam, I don't like this. You could be in real danger, getting mixed up in whatever Kingsley is involved in. Samantha smiled sadly, reaching out to touch his rough cheek. I'm already in danger. The moment I discovered the Codex was a fake, I became a threat to Kingsley's plans. She dropped her hand, curling it into a determined fist. I have to see this through. I have to stop him. Ethan covered her fist with his own calloused hand, his skin warm. Then I'm with you every step of the way. We're in this together. Samantha's heart turned over at the unwavering conviction in his eyes, the protective fierceness in his voice. In that moment she wanted nothing more than to sink into his arms, to pour out the feelings she had kept bottled up for so long. But she couldn't, not now, not yet. First, they had to untangle the twisted web of greed and lies that Kingsley had woven around the forged codex. So instead, she simply squeezed Ethan's hand and tried to convey her gratitude and affection in that single touch. 
Then she straightened her shoulders and locked eyes with him, a steely glint in her gaze. Let's get to work. The next day, Samantha presented herself at Kingsley's Belgravia mansion for their scheduled meeting, her black satchel heavy with the weight of her discoveries. The austere housekeeper led her into a cavernous study lined with bookshelves, sagging under the weight of countless rare volumes. Kingsley sat behind a massive mahogany desk, hands templed under his chin as he watched her approach. Ms. Ray, he said, smooth as aged scotch. I trust your evaluation of the Codex is complete? It is, Samantha said, mouth dry as she perched on the edge of the offered chair. And I'm afraid I cannot authenticate it. The Codex Gelanus you provided the library is a forgery. Kingsley's expression flickered, a crack in the genial mask, before resettling into careful neutrality. A forgery? Are you quite certain? I am. Samantha detailed the anachronisms and inconsistencies she had uncovered, willing her voice not to shake. As she spoke, an icy gleam crept into Kingsley's pale eyes. I must say I'm surprised, he said when she finished. The provenance and documentation for the Codex is impeccable. I paid a great deal to procure it. Samantha leaned forward. With all due respect, Mr. Kingsley, the physical evidence doesn't lie. Whoever created this manuscript went to great lengths to mimic a 12th century work. But it is most definitely not authentic. Kingsley unclasped his hands and slowly rose to his feet. He was tall and powerfully built, his Savile Row suit doing little to hide the coiled strength in his frame. You're a very perceptive woman, Ms. Ray, he said softly. Too perceptive, perhaps. A frisson of fear slithered down Samantha's spine, but she refused to let it show. She stood as well, clutching the strap of her satchel. I'm simply doing my job, sir. The Codex is a fake. I cannot in good conscience declare otherwise. Cannot, or will not. Kingsley moved around the desk, advancing on her with the liquid grace of a hunting cat. Ms. Ray, are you aware of what the Codex Galanus purportedly contains? The secrets of the prima materia, the first matter from which the philosopher's stone can be created. Limitless wealth, eternal life, power beyond imagining. Samantha swallowed hard but held her ground, even as Kingsley loomed over her. Those are just myths and stories. The philosopher's stone doesn't exist. Kingsley's chuckle was dark and mirthless. I assure you, my dear, the stone is quite real as is the formula for creating it, decoded from the enciphered writings of Odo of Gallianus himself in the margins of the true codex. Then why do you need this forgery authenticated? Samantha asked, mind racing. Because I require a decoy. Something to keep the hungry wolves at bay while I work in secret, to translate Gallianus's formulas and produce the stone myself. Kingsley's hand shot out and clamped around Samantha's wrist in a crushing grip. And you, Miss Ray, are going to provide that decoy by publicly declaring the Codex genuine. Never, Samantha hissed, trying in vain to wrench away. I won't be party to your lies. Kingsley yanked her closer, so close she could feel his hot breath on her face, see the madness swirling in his eyes. You will, or I will destroy everyone and everything you hold dear. Starting with your dear old mum wasting away in that Surrey care home. Samantha went cold, heart seizing. You wouldn't, wouldn't I? Kingsley smiled, a slash of white in the shadows. Amazing, the sorts of accidents that can befall the elderly and infirm. A missed medication, an unexplained fall. The image of her mother, frail and confused, but still so loving, flashed through Samantha's mind and she felt tears sting her eyes. How could this be happening? She had only wanted to do what was right, to expose the truth. And now a madman was threatening her family, the one person she loved most in this world. In that moment, faced with an impossible choice, Samantha did the only thing she could. She went limp in Kingsley's grasp, as if all the fight had drained out of her. Well, Ms. Ray? Kingsley purred. What will it be? Declare the Codex authentic, or bury your mother? A single tear slid down Samantha's cheek. 
But when she raised her eyes to Kingsley's, they blazed with defiance. Damn you, she whispered. Damn you to hell. Then, in one fluid motion, she ripped her arm from his grasp and grabbed the first edition of Faust, weighing down the corner of his desk. Before Kingsley could react, Samantha swung the heavy tome with all her strength. It connected with his temple with a sickening thud. Kingsley stumbled back, dazed, and Samantha ran. She crashed through the study doors and careened wildly down the hall, the blood roaring in her ears. She had to get to Ethan, had to tell him what she'd learned before Kingsley and his murderous machinations caught up with her. But as she reached the foyer, she skidded to a halt, ice flooding her veins. The housekeeper stood between her and the door, a ugly snub-nosed revolver pointed directly at Samantha's chest. Leaving so soon, miss? She asked, cocking the hammer with an ominous click. I think not. Samantha's eyes darted desperately around the space, searching for a way out. But there was none. She was well and truly trapped. Just then, an ear-splitting crash shattered the leaded glass window behind the housekeeper. She whirled with a shriek, just as a dark figure came diving through the ragged opening. The housekeeper got off one wild shot before the intruder slammed into her, knocking the gun from her hand and sending them both sprawling on the tile. Ethan! Samantha cried as he grappled with the flailing housekeeper. He delivered a sharp blow to her chin, and she went limp. Ethan scrambled to his feet and crossed to Samantha in two long strides, hands gripping her shoulders. Are you all right? Did he hurt you? No, but Kingsley, he admitted everything. He has the real codex with Galanus's formulas. He wants to use the fake to throw everyone off the trail while he makes a philosopher's stone. I know, Ethan said grimly. Bauer, my German professor friend, translated the parchment. It tells the whole story. Kingsley's been searching for the Codex for years. Then we have to stop him, Samantha said fiercely. We have to find the real Codex and destroy it before he can complete his work. A slow clap echoed through the foyer, and they spun to see Kingsley standing at the top of the sweeping staircase, rubbing his temple. Well done, he said, voice dripping venom. You've unraveled my little plot. He began to descend the stairs, footsteps echoing. It's a pity, really. This all could have been so much easier if you had just authenticated the forgery, like a good little expert. His eyes flashed to Ethan. And you, I should have squashed you like the meddling insect you are when I had the chance. Ethan pushed Samantha behind him, shielding her. It's over, Kingsley. We have all of the proof we need to expose you. You'll never get away with this, Samantha called out, her voice steady despite the fear thrumming through her veins. The authorities will stop you. Kingsley laughed, a cruel, hollow sound. You still don't understand, do you? I am the authority. My reach extends into every crevice of power in this city, this country. No one can touch me. He reached the bottom of the stairs and advanced on them, a vicious gleam in his eye. Least of all you two. But don't worry, I'll make sure your deaths look like a tragic accident. The star-crossed lovers, done in by their own foolish heroics. Samantha's heart hammered as she scanned the room for anything that could be used as a weapon. Her gaze caught on a jewel-hilted letter opener on a nearby table. In a flash, she lunged for it, snatching it up and whirling to face Kingsley. Don't come any closer, she warned, gripping the opener like a dagger. I will use this. Kingsley smiled indulgently. Oh, Ms. Ray, haven't you realized yet? I'm invincible. Nothing can stop me, certainly not your little toy. He stepped forward and Samantha charged, a scream of defiance tearing from her throat. Quick as a snake, Kingsley seized her wrist, twisting savagely. The letter opener fell from her grip and clattered to the floor. Let her go, Ethan roared, sprinting toward them. But Kingsley was faster. He spun Samantha to face Ethan and wrapped an arm around her throat, squeezing. She choked, black spots dancing in her vision as she scrabbled at his iron hold. One more step and I snap her pretty neck, Kingsley spat. Ethan froze, face blanched with terror. Please. Don't hurt her. I'll do anything. 
You'll die, that's what you'll do. Both of you. Kingsley tightened his chokehold and Samantha saw her fate written in Ethan's anguished eyes. They had lost. Kingsley had won? But in that moment, as darkness crept into the edges of Samantha's sight, a strange calm descended over her. If this was to be her end, she would meet it on her own terms. With her last ounce of strength, she drove her elbow into Kingsley's side, right above his kidney. Kingsley grunted in surprise and his grip loosened just a fraction, but it was enough. Samantha ripped free, spinning to face him. Ethan was there in an instant, fists flying as he laid into Kingsley with reckless abandon. Samantha dove for the fallen letter opener and snatched it up, whirling back to the fray. The men crashed into an antique curio cabinet, sending glass flying. Kingsley grabbed a shard and slashed at Ethan, slicing open his arm. Ethan cried out and fell back, clutching the wound. Now you die, Kingsley panted, raising the jagged shard high. Samantha didn't hesitate. With a wordless cry, she leapt forward and buried the letter opener to the hilt in Kingsley's back. He stiffened, a shocked gurgle rising in his throat. Then he crumpled to the ground and lay still, glassy eyes, staring at nothing. For a moment, the only sound was Samantha and Ethan's ragged breathing. Then Ethan pulled her into his arms and crushed her to his chest. She broke down then, great racking sobs shaking her frame as the enormity of what had just happened crashed over her. Shit, it's all right, Ethan soothed, stroking her hair. It's over now. We're safe. They clung to each other as the wail of approaching sirens filled the air. Later, after the police had come and gone, after their cuts were bandaged and their statements given, Samantha and Ethan stood on the stately front steps of the mansion, watching the dawn paint the sky in stripes of gold and pink eye. What do we do now? Samantha asked quietly, sliding her fingers through Ethan's. He squeezed her hand. We keep going. We find the real codex and make sure the secrets of the Philosopher's Stone never fall into the wrong hands again. And we do it together. Samantha turned to face him, heart in her eyes. Ethan, when I was in Kingsley's clutches, when I thought for sure we were done for, all I could think was that I would die without ever telling you. He touched her cheek, calloused thumb, brushing her quivering lips. Telling me what, Sam? That I love you, she whispered. That I'm in love with you. I have been for so long. Ethan's answering smile was brighter than the rising sun. Oh, my darling Samantha, I love you too more than I ever knew I could love anyone. Then he was kissing her and Samantha melted into him, pouring all the fear and longing and desperate, aching love she felt into that single, perfect kiss. In the glow of the newborn day, with Ethan's arms around her and his lips on hers, Samantha knew that come what may, sinister plots, ancient manuscripts, even the pursuit of immortality itself, they would face it side by side. Two hearts entwined now and forever. And somewhere, deep in the bowels of the British Library, the true Codex Galanus sat waiting to be found, its secrets yet to be revealed. But that, that was a mystery for another day.